tonight. We will go to Lombardia. In these tough and depressing pandemic times, when we are only allowed to leave our houses if we are out of toilet paper, the best alternative to travel without abandoning your fortress is wine. So sit back, relax and join me on 20 Italian wine regions with Core Breaker. Let's go! Last region from this long project. What are you talking about, Willis? Yeah, yeah, there is still Calabria, but I will leave it white because uh, none of the Calabrian winemakers agreed to participate in this project and I could not find any Calabrian wine in uh, Lithuania. But I tried one uh, when I was in Campania and it was a uh, quite good tasting wine. So back to the last region, it is one of the biggest wine regions in Italy. It is also a center of industry and fashion and it is also a region which occupies the most beautiful lakes in Europe. But Lombardy should feel lucky to have all those lakes in their land because it is one of the few landlocked regions who do not touch the sea with its borders. In the west we will find Piemont, Emilia Romana to the south, Veneto to the east and central Alps with Switzerland Ticino region to the north. Because of its location between the Alps and Po Basin, the region can offer an impressive diversity of mesoclimates. That's why I decided to cover three different producing regions. In the north, framed by the central Alps, we'll find Valtellina. Here, in the high altitudes, is produced probably the best red wine of the region from Nebbiolo grapes locally called Chia Venasca. Vineyards lie at around 700 meters altitude and even though this grape has been grown there since 5th century, their uh, main market was always Switzerland. So true Nebbiolo fans should start looking for these wines. Going down between Brescia and Lake Isea, we will find the best alternative to Champagne Italy has to offer, called Francia Corta. Wine here is made just like Champagne and is matured 18 months for non-vintage and 30 months for winter sparkles. Only one difference that instead of Menia, they use Pinot Bianco. Worth mentioning is satin style from Chardonnay only, which has less pressure in the bottle and to achieve that producers add less sugar in the liqueur de terrage and lower level of sugar produces less alcohol and carbon dioxide during second fermentation. And lower down in the regions south and east where the landscape consists more of low hills and plains we will find Oltrepo Pavese. It is the most prolific region in terms of production accounting for nearly one half of all wine made in Lombardia and as well as two-thirds of all DOC production. It was always the main Milan wine supplier offering very decent red wines from Barbera and Croatina grapes and high quality Oltrepo Pavese Metodo Classico DOCG sparkling wines. Now that we have an image of the wine made in Lombardia, let's check what uh, else to do out there. First stop is the Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. I'm not a big fan of art, except wine, because I do not have enough knowledge and will to learn how to admire it. But this is a masterpiece which should be seen by everyone at least once a lifetime. I just like Mona Lisa. Next stop is Duomo of Milan. Again, I am not the biggest fan of churches or cathedrals or any other religious monuments. But this gothic masterpiece is one of the most renowned monuments in the whole country. And I did not even go in when I went to Milan. Just walking around and uh, admiring the carved exterior stole almost three hours from the day. And lastly is Bergamo. Well, you could say it's snowing in Bergamo or Atalanta. It is hands down the most beautiful airport city I have ever been to. We had 8 hours before the flight back and decided to wander around the city and uh, maybe to eat some lunch. Best part of the city is old town up the hill called Cita Alta. When you get up there, be smarter than me and use funicular. Those views from the top will steal your heart. And also Stracciatella ice cream was born in Cita Alta. So it's another reason to spend at least one day up there. And now the wine of the region is Francia Corta Cuvée Royale by Marchese Antenori Winery. Everything started in 
1385 when Giovanni di Piero Antinore became a member of the Fiorentine Winemakers Guild. And now this family has been making wine for 26 generations. And as you would imagine, this family owns quite many estates. Well, yeah, they have estates in Tuscany, most notably is Tenuta Tignanello, then Umbria, Lombardia, Piemont, Puglia, Washington, Napa Valley, Chile, and many more. Tenuta Montenissa was acquired in 1999 and they make sparkling wine from Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Bianco. The must for this wine is fermented in stainless steel tanks and after that it was kept on lace in the bottle for 36 months. Let's taste it. It has a medium plus intensity straw color, nose, has aromas of uh, ripe lemon, peaches, pomelo, whipped cream, freshly baked white bread, yeast and cooking butter. Mouth has high acidity, medium alcohol, dry taste and delicate small bubble. On the palate, taste of wild apples. Just how I started this project is the perfect way to end it the bubbles. Even though I prefer champagne, this is a perfect example that Italy would not get depressed if France would uh, decide to stop sharing champagne with its neighbor. Let me know in the comments what you think about uh, Francia Corta. Don't forget to like and follow. Salute!